Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador. And I'm Mike Newman. And this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. This evening we have with us Juan Luera. Welcome, Juan. My pleasure. And Juan, you are all the way from Chiapas, Mexico. That is correct. And I've heard so much about the indigenous struggles there and um, so much that's going on there, but I really don't understand everything. So maybe you can explain to us exactly. Well, give us some of your, your uh, tribal affiliation first, and then we'll go into Chiapas. Um, through, uh, on my father's side, of course, the Mexica, he came from, from Mexico, the mountains. And, mm -hmm. and then on my mother's side was a Mescalero Pueblo from New Mexico. Um, migrant farm workers up into the late 50s, mm -hmm. settled in the Salinas Valley, and then, you know, went through the 60s with the Cesar Chavez movement, mm -hmm. so we got a little bit of background there. And then the 70s to the Chicano movement, right. so that's where we got some of the ideology of, of, the, of our struggle. Um, in uh, probably about 12 years ago, I read uh, an article that was written by a young lady out of Berkeley, Cristel Maya mm -hmm. Guzman, and I just found it you know, super interesting. It was after the uprising of 94 with the Zapatistas mm -hmm. and Chiapas and uh, how these people were just sick and tired of being sick and tired, the typical indigenous brother and sister story mm -hmm. and how they've been exploited and so on. And uh, we got together uh, with about three or four other people here out of California and decided to uh, go down there and do some research. While we were there, uh, walking through the parts of the jungle, different parts of the mountains, um, we're saying, why are these people living in poverty? They're sitting in these coffee patches. And I started doing research because mm -hmm. I knew absolutely nothing about coffee of, of this. How can we empower these people? How can we better their situation mm -hmm. without violence, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, you know, still maintain their dignity as a people and their mm -hmm. culture. So uh, I, after, I say, two or three years of research, you know, we found coffee to be like the second most traded commodity only after oil. And we're saying, well, these guys got to come together and they have to form it's like we did in the 60s with the, with mm -hmm. the farm workers, get together and, and uh, struggle against these big transnational companies who have been exploiting us for many, many, many years, or maybe 500 years we could talk about. But not going there with it, just kind of saying, okay, let's get this on a positive note and uh, redirect our energy towards organizing, empower them through training, education. And uh, mm -hmm. we took off with a venture that we knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a business venture. It was more of how do, how do, we, how do we better the situation here mm -hmm. for these people? How were you received by the people there? I um, mean, because obviously you're an outsider coming from the United States. and Well, actually, uh, uh, the sister Cristel actually went and lived with the brothers in 94 during the uprising. Mm -hmm. So we had some names and contacts of people that we'd go to that were saying, okay, mm -hmm. these guys are okay. They're, mm -hmm. they're not you know, going to do anything you know, to hurt us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, of course, once you're there, how you conduct yourself you know, with respect, right. like the sister Aurora was talking about earlier. Um, it's probably one of the most important things. I mean, you're not going to walk into a big uh, five-story home or anything, but mm -hmm. the little that they got, they're very willing to mm -hmm. share with you. And, you know, it's important that you go in there on our, on our level, that we understand. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't difficult for me because we grew up, uh, like I said, you know, working in the fields and understanding that life was a struggle. Mm -hmm. What type of, well, there's so many types of exploitation, but it's, it's for the government over there of the people. Well, you know, uh, I got there after, I say, I arrived there late 97, so there had been a few years the struggle had rose up and then mm -hmm. calmed down, mm -hmm. and they had already defined their boundaries, mm -hmm. the autonomous <laughs> pueblos of, of those indígenas de Chiapas, mm -hmm. where pretty much they said, we know where these are, these are, this is where our people are going to be, and we don't want nothing from you. Mm -hmm. We don't want nothing from the government, which is great, because, you know, the government was always trying to offer them some bags of cement or some cinder blocks and we'll, you know we're just we're going to become uh, self-sufficient people mm -hmm. and uh once you know once we got uh into the communities uh some of the things that we that we identified like i said, was saying was um what were their strong points you know what were their weaknesses one of the biggest things that we've all suffered from is the, the old divide and conquer mm -hmm. and it was hard to get the people together because you're dealing with different dialects different totally That's different right. tribes so we'd go in and we'd, we'd talk to them. Uh, you know, we'd take a little vinyl chalkboard with the, you know, and give her a little deal. Or we talked about economics on, on their level mm -hmm. and uh, how we could uh, fortify their situations and, you know, what we had to offer. And how do we, what is a organic coffee? Why should you have organic coffee? Well, we talk about, number one, being in harmony with 
where, you know, with the land, mm -hmm. you know, with the Creator, with Mother Earth. And, of course, those things they understand perfectly. Right, mm. right. But the certification <laughs> process to them is confusing because it's like, oh, no, i got to go by these rules. I said, all we're going to do is go back to what our grandfather did or, uh -huh. you know, or, or our ancestors. So um, all of that in, in, uh, took years of work. Uh, you know, some of the people work, we work with, as I mentioned, are the Sotzil, Celtal, Soque, Chol, Mom. So getting these people all in one room, Fortunately, the majority of them. Are these little different villages? Where the, where different regions of Chiapas. Oh, okay. okay. Uh -huh. How uh, large is Chiapas? I don't, I'm not it's familiar. one of the biggest states. I guess is you could it? say like a Texas to the United States, Chiapas is. Oh, wow. Wow. It's, it's huge. Okay. Yeah, and it's all rough terrain. Uh -huh. um, you know, we got the four by four vehicles and we drive uh -huh. down dirt roads sometimes four or five hours. Sometimes we've got to walk depending uh -huh. on what the situation is, Jeez. weather conditions and so on. Wow. Now, you know, I, it, being an affiliate of the National Council of Adas, a lot of times they have, um, they'll have vendors there with blouses from Chiapas. Is that something, is there a garment industry there or, um, you know, it's normally to help the, you know, the indigenous people of Chi Chiapas? I don't know much about it other than what I've heard, you know, over here. It's a very small percentage. Uh -huh. And so, you know, our, our whole, our whole uh, theme of, of empowerment, you know, through social justice was not to turn anybody away. So anyone comes and well, I only have a, uh, a quarter hectare of coffee. It don't matter. You know, you're a brother, you're a sister, you can, you can get in the, or, in the organization, which is now a legal, legally constituted entity called uh, Confederation, National Confederation of Mexican Producers. Wow. So th they have, they all produce coffee on their, whatever land they have and they contribute to the overall business or how does that well, work? What we did was, well, there's vanilla, there's uh, pepper, there's uh, uh, allspice, papaya, mango, you know, cacao for chocolate. Mm -hmm. But coffee, we figured if we can get a master's degree with the coffee, then the rest will come naturally. Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll be coming up with certified organic uh, honey for the international market. Mm. So uh, the coffee was the key and the strongest and the quickest that we figured that we could empower these people because it was about economies. Mm -hmm. If you can't feed your children and you can't educate them, which is one of our key uh, uh, items that we push with our people is education, especially for the young, for the young women mm -hmm. because it's you know, a typical story. By the time the girl's 15, 16 years old, she's married and she could be a a very bright, intelligent person. It could be a doctor, a lawyer, a, mm -hmm. a diplomat, you know, mm. et cetera, et cetera. So, right, right. Um, we started pushing all those issues and, um, and then came together. We, we actually have bylaws that are all written up, but it's really clear what we have to do, mm -hmm. what our objectives are. And so um, the coffee uh, was really rough. It was a really rough ride. We, uh, in 2004, we, in February, we legally constituted the Confederation, so it was illegal entity that could export coffee and so on. Three months later, uh, they stole $50,000 of coffee from us. Oh. And so it was just a continuous thing. I had to come back to the States, do fundraising with friends. I stayed here like oh almost two years. Goodness. Because it was coffee. We didn't have working capital, so people put their coffee together and we outsourced the milling of the coffee, the processing, selection, and so on. Mm -hmm. And people with money took the coffee. And oh. a typical story. Oh. And the injustice of all that is it's been six years and it took me it took me six years and oh, seven attorneys and twenty thousand dollars. Just I just got a wrist warrant for this person that was responsible for this. Mm -hmm. So that's the injustice that we talk about in Chapel for the indigenous <laughs> people. There, there is no fair level playing field, and so we figure we have to create that for ourselves. Yes. And number one is being organized. Mm -hmm. Being organized. So now is it back on stable ground as far as the business goes? And tell me about the business, how that operates, and well, how people can help by either, I don't know, purchasing the coffee, or do you distribute here, or do you, how does that work? Well, we were fortunate enough to, uh, you know, the Creator put many good people in our paths. Uh, we have a group of Canadians, uh, Sean McDonald, Jeff Ferris, Andy Bruce, or some gentlemen that came to the, came to step to the plate. Mm -hmm. In 04, we were really excited because we had talked to them. Uh, Sean had been supportive of our whole movement. He, he was just like enthralled with the whole thing. Well, I said, I can really do something to help these people. They issued us a letter of credit for coffee. Mm -hmm. And that's when we put our coffee together, thinking we'll get our coffee, you send it to the port, mm -hmm. we'll get paid, and you know, we empowered our people because they were just people were just elated thinking we're gonna export our coffee. That was like a dream that their mm -hmm. father might have had or their grandfathers might have had, but they never got there. Mm -hmm. These huge barriers, language, right. you know, money, uh, lack of information, the New York Board mm -hmm. of Trade, what is that? What's a put, what's a call, what's an option? We're like these yeah. guys at the average grade level is like second grade education for these for these brothers and sisters. 
Um, so we formed, we got together with this group of uh, people from the U.S. and Canada. And uh, in 05, we did our first exportations out of uh, out of uh, Chiapas. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife is uh, is uh, Sotzil. So while I was here juggling the fireballs and putting out the fires, uh, the situation that we had, mm -hmm. the Canadians, I went to visit with them. Said, "What happened?" I explained it. You know what it, what had occurred. I said, "Well, yeah, it's always happening to the people at the bottom." He said, "Well, they're going to support you." And that that year in 2005, they took like. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars of coffee from our group, which was a huge boost. Mm -hmm. And we've had like a two hundred percent growth every year of members. Mm -hmm. We don't have any money, but the organization continues to grow because of the ideology that we have. And then in '06 we did the same thing. In '07 we exported coffee, and our dream was, our vision as a group was, having roasted coffee in the bag, and sharing those dividends with the communities. Mm -hmm. Where we actually started a scholarship fund. We're working with uh, with another organization through Dr. Tamara Brennan of uh, Sexto Soul, which mm -hmm. is uh, they have sextosoul.org. Um, she empowers communities by bringing international funds, water programs, sanitation, education, and she's real big too mm -hmm. with the with the with the young women in the communities. Mm -hmm. So just forming these alliances was important, so that we would, we would have this because no, I mean the government says they have these millions and millions and millions of pesos that are going to the communities. But I can say that it's that's not true. It's not happening. It's it's a lot of it is utilized for political reasons, hmm. and that's one of our first rules. We we refuse to get involved with any political group. If I go back to my father's training, when I would refuse to salute the flag here, I wouldn't salute the flag. You know, I was just trying to be a <laughs> hardcore rebel and that type of a deal, right? Um, and so now where we're at now with the, with the same Canadian group that has uh, has uh, continued to to make us strong you know, for for our battles. Mm -hmm. um, they were funded us uh, about a quarter million pounds of green bean coffee, took it to the roast facility in Canada, and we've come up with our Mayan Wind signatures copies. Hmm. So now we have a line of, of, of roasted coffee in the bag, and through that very same coffee, we're going to be uh, uh, building up funds for a scholarship program for the people in Chiapas. Uh, we're also going to be on the United Farm Workers, the Cesar Chavez website. They'll be carrying our coffee. Uh -huh. So we're going back to our grassroots community organizations and saying. We can help empower and fortify, because we have a struggle here. A struggle. I mean, it's, it's, there's no boundaries for our struggle. Our struggle That's goes for to sure. Guatemala. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were working with people in Guatemala, and you were just, mm -hmm. there's a huge need for this type of education for the people. Because there's people that are you know, willing to work so hard, but where do they go? And what mm -hmm. do they do? Mm -hmm. And nobody's handing any of that information out or that financing. So we can empower ourselves, and this is one of the things that we identify through the coffee. And then coming to the agreement with all of our representatives in, in the state of Chiapas, and we're also in Oaxaca, and we're also with Totonacos in Pueblo and Zapotecas out of Oaxaca. We have a huge, uh, huge membership base now. Now it's called Mayan Winds? Mayan Winds. Mayan Winds. Uh -huh. And is it distributed here in the United States? We or just, is that going to be with the um, UFW? Our website, we have a Mayan, www.mayanwinds.com website. Um, but our online store will be up and running probably in two days. Oh, so good. we'll be able to order. And it's the... Top of the line, high mountain grown, Altura, <laughs> certified organic that you get from all the other companies, which are transnationals. Um, but none of that's going back to the people. There's no dividends being shared with the people. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. So that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, they're continuing. Now, this to be is going to impact the schools, or you said through scholarships, and it's going to help it's educate. Gonna, we, don't do, we don't deal with any of the, say, conventional. Like the education system, we mm -hmm. would deal directly with our communities. That's uh, good. We have a young lady now. Uh, this summer, I had a, a teacher that knows me, you know, a friend of mine, bring me down uh, the report cards. And a young lady, you know, just graduated from high school, and she had straight A's from kindergarten through graduation of high school, or what they call prepa over there. Mm -hmm. And I was going like, wow, she's a very sharp young lady. I was so, he goes, my, the problem is, you know, her traditional deal, she's just going to be married off and stay mm. up in the mountains, you know, but she wants to pursue her education and she wants to see what she can return and she wants to study ecology or she's studying ecology now. Mm -hmm. So we talked to people we knew and we said, okay, let's get her first semester. We got her enrolled at the university wow. in Tuxla Gutierrez. Oh, good. And that's what gave us the idea. I said, hey, you know, there's a, pro there's a lot of, we've, we know that this problem is existing, but this mm -hmm. one, like, we got to do something personally on this one because it's just a very bright mind and it, uh, and we saw the sincerity in the person, a very, very, uh, mm -hmm. Family oriented and, and hmm. uh, you know, community based individual. That I know that one day she'll 
give something back. So I figure we can do that with lots of them. Well, one of them turns around and does something good for our people. It would be a good thing. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, tell us a little bit more about the coffee. Actually, I've had the coffee, and it's really good. So okay. <laughs> I highly recommend it. But tell our audience more about the coffee. Well, it's uh, Chiapas is uh, well-renowned for, for its quality as far as the coffee and lots of other products was one of the first uh, in the world to be certified organic as far as the coffee goes. Um, the verbiage, you'll see it all over the different websites, you know, High Mountain Growing Arabica. Mm -hmm. All of our coffees with our groups are in the High Mountain regions, and some are in the jungle, depending on what part of the state that we're in. Um, our uh, certifications, a lot of people ask us, well, why don't you have the fair trade certification? Well, we're not trying to conform to the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we have documents. Our, the, the Confederation is owned by the farmers. My name's not on their documents, it's not on their bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, let them call me maestro, teacher, um, compañero, which means, you know, like your companion in, in, right. in a struggle, a lucha, we call it la lucha, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's, we feel that uh, well, one of our slogans is exactly that, more than fair trade, empowering the people, Mayan wins. That's exactly what we do. It's about empowerment. And it's not about give me your coffee, I'm, you know, I'll have this nice limousine in the car in the United States and you continue to be poor. I've actually been questioned by transnational people like, why are you down there teaching them about this? How do you check your coffee price, what your coffee is really worth? The indigenous people don't have any idea. They just used to sell their coffee at the door. Mm -hmm. Now they'll come and ask you, hey, how's NIBOT doing? You know, in their, in, their, in their own language, you know, they'll say, well, how's the New York Board of Trade price? What's it looking like today? And then teaching to convert that into dollars per pound to kilos and pesos and so mm -hmm. on you know it's a whole conversion process well we teach the people that that's empowerment because now that's you have right. Right. valid information and you know what your product is really worth i may not be here tomorrow but at least we taught you that mm -hmm. nobody can fool you about what your product is because that's one of the exploitation you know that's they right. come down to one of these uh transnational warehouses and the guy tell them oh your coffee's worth 300 pesos well he doesn't know how to do it. just sell his coffee these guys all get together, say the same thing. They don't have any well seller coffee. So that's, you know, that was just, and you talk, you hear about it. All oh, the Mendoza family, they're just huge. They were made so much money on coffee. No, they were just getting over on everybody. It's really what it was. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, what are your plans for expansion? Are you going to the internet to sell? And then also, you said with the um, UFW. Um, right. We're actually right now um, through Sexto Soul who has her own website and you know she talks about what we're doing with the communities. Uh, Tamara's been working in uh, Guatemala, El Salvador with, with the indigenous communities there for about 10 years. And she did a lot of stuff with children that were exposed to you know, the stuff that was going on down there with uh, the guerrilla groups and so on in the government. And you know, children that saw tragedies, you know, their parents you know, maybe being executed, that type of thing. So she's a psychologist, so she went down mm -hmm. there on a mission and just got involved with these young children. I mean, you know, her life was probably in danger a bunch of times, but she's one of those persons who doesn't think about that. You know, she's just doing her thing. And so we kind of formed our alliance, and so now we're gonna start working, doing the same thing as we're doing in Chiapas, Oaxaca, Puebla, and Veracruz, with some of the Guatemalan people there, mm -hmm. which are mom, mom, mame is their language they speak there. So um, we've got about six communities that we're gonna be uh, getting in contact with there. She just got back from doing a water project or something there. Wow, you know that's uh, empowerment. You know that's it's good for small communities to learn what empowerment is, but it's a two-way street empowerment. You know because someone like me, for example, then might not know about this um, this product or the struggles that occur down south. And so empowerment, you know, I feel it has to work not only towards the people you're helping, but to get the people to understand why you're helping. You know, so empowerment is, is really a two-way two street. So I'm glad to, to learn of this because now I feel empowered to find out more and start to question and spread that word. And I'm glad uh, we brought them here to the show. Yeah, really. And also, um, how do how would somebody watching sh the show be able to come? Perhaps a vendor is is there distributor distributor there? Like that. That's the word I'm right. looking for. Right. Actually, we're we're um. Where's your brochure? Let's see that at a sure. powwow. <laughs> Black medicine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Black medicine. Yeah. Mayan wins imports. Hey. Yeah, actually, I think I did get it out of Pawa one time. Yeah, no, the thing, uh, you know, products like these, you know, that, that demonstrates the true purpose of, of unity, of, of a friendship family, because, you know, being in the United States of America, united, 
you know, it's, it's difficult to see where that unity lies, but with the indigenous community, and I say community with the word unity at the end, you know, it, it's important to know that, that we, uh, we learn about things like this, and we learn about the struggles mm -hmm. south, south of, of, of where we are. So America could put a border there, and say, hey, you know, that fence is right there, but um, it's hard for me to, to visualize that, that fence because I never saw it. So it's good to know that word travels without um, having we to do, have borders. a checkpoint at the border. There's no checkpoint for a voice, you know. There, I mean, there's censorship. But. That's another thing mm -hmm. we talk about is breaking barriers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, although we didn't put those barriers there, we have we have very much say-so in any of that. We talk about, you know, and that's another thing we're educating our people is, you know, the legality of, the importance of, of why we have to do things in a legal manner. So that's mm -hmm. another education process. We were able to pull uh, about 70 of these, of these men out of their communities and with an H2B visa to an American company out of Idaho. Really? Mm. Lasted about a month before the guy was gouging them out of their checks, 30 bucks. Well, you multiply it by 70 men, it was thousands of dollars a month. Needless to say, we pulled our people and we, we, we have them in the Department of Labor and the judicial system for a lawsuit now for, so you know, we're, it's 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 a it's a continuous battle. It never stops. Right. So you these guys came here. They were too. happy. We you know uh, maybe one day I'll bring the video of these men getting on the bus, leaving Chiapas, and you can see the we're going to go legally and work. All, you know, and these men have a reputation for being very hard workers. The company mm -hmm. itself said, "Where are your men from?" And I said, "Chiapas." He goes, "Oh, those are those Indian guys." He goes, "Oh, those guys are really hard workers. Those are some of the best workers I ever had." And so uh, we had to visit them because within let's say within the first months their checks were were being gouged. But mm -hmm. I guess this gentleman thought mm -hmm. we were like recruiters or something like that. And he made a mistake, obviously, <laughs> because we were on him quick. I mean, within two months, okay. he was sued. We had lawyers on him. Uh, my brother, Fernando, who is also a, a, one of our strongest supporters, uh, Fernando Loera, uh, flew down there, made two trips, did video, did a whole fact-finding mission with video, interviewing the, the forestry, the United States forestry inspectors. And so we you know, went in there and, and we did our job. Good. You know, That's good. So... Uh, well, we have a couple more minutes, so what uh, message would you like to leave our audience with? Well, um, get information off our, our website, and, uh, you know, my, my email is there. Um, I, I, love, I love to share the information with the people, what we can do. And, and, uh, and then we're also working uh, with a young lady out of, she's from the Wall Street tribe here, Amanda Van. And I also did some stuff at DQ a few years ago when I was here mm -hmm. with Empowerment and did some coffee mm -hmm. shells and stuff. So... Some of the gentlemen that we talked to, uh, Wendell Yalobo is another gentleman. We we're talking about empowerment, you know, even on our reservations. You know, mm -hmm. what about setting up your own roasting place and instead of using, without mentioning any coffee companies, why don't we have our own coffee in, in these casinos and create jobs that on the reservations? Ideal. And that's the stuff that, you know, we mm -hmm. can teach. We have all the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, it's just a, a vast array of, of things that need to be done and we probably won't get it done in this lifetime. But as long as you can get it, everything in motion, pass on the knowledge to someone else, other generations, so they can keep it going and expand on it. Well, I think we have good direction. That's good. We have uh, people that are willing to work and struggle, which is the mm -hmm. most important thing. Well, that's good. Well, I hope our audience will go online and we'll have the, uh, the website there so they can uh, order some coffee. And actually, if you could, they could buy it in bulk right and yeah we have a, we have a deal on there right now we're ready we're now we're ready for just you know the biggest detail with all of this is small co-ops have tried to come and do this and say well we got small amounts of coffee we're we're ready for the big picture hmm. we have hmm. a access to an automated roasting facility could do five thousand pounds a day if you roast it in packages that type of a deal yeah i would hope that um the casinos would jump on that and um you know the reservations and yeah, it wouldn't be just about selling; it would be about empowering them with sure, that business, absolutely. and about about keeping that that the money within the, the communities. yeah within yeah. the communities. Yeah, because, the communities. yeah, because you know we we can we can talk about the business uh, the Better Business Bureau, but I mean it's all about the uh, Indigenous Business that's Bureau. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I think that's a huge, yeah. we have a huge base there within our within our community. We mm -hmm. do, we do. Well, thank you for coming all the way from Chiapas to visit us on Native Voice TV. And we wish you a lot of luck and we'll spread the word too. All right. yeah. Thank you. you. Can help us at Some home. Extent, right? Thank you for coming. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next Saturday at four o'clock. And if you missed the show, you can catch it on Monday.
At 8 p.m. At 8 p.m. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. Good night.